Welcome to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. For the next hour, you'll hear proven methods for how to live the multiple income streams dream. Ryan is passionate about helping others discover their gifts and start their own business. He's published five books, and his courses and group coaching programs have changed the lives of thousands of students all over the world. Ryan's books include Private Label, The Easy Way, Finding Your Grace Place, and his latest, Streams of Income. And now, here's your host, Ryan Rieger. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger. And in this episode, we're talking to Brian Page. Brian is the author of a book called Don't Start a Side Hustle, Do This Instead. We had a fascinating conversation. Brian is very successful, has a business, uh, several businesses. He said he's got like 20 sums, different streams of passive income. Wow. Uh, I knew when his assistant reached out about an interview that I had to interview this guy because I just want to hear more about passive income because I know we're all looking for that. Now, there's nothing wrong with active income like an Amazon business, but uh, at some point you'd want to be able to get out of it, work on your business instead of in your business and passive income streams totally help to do that. And we talked about some of them on this episode, several of them actually. He's got a whole course called the BNB Formula where he helps people uh, create uh, income from Airbnbs that you don't even own, properties that you don't even own. So I know for some of you, that's going to be very intriguing and you'll want to check that out. But go to watchfreetraining.com, watchfreetraining.com to get a copy of his book and some really cool um, bonuses that he has. But we just talked about so many really cool things like, you know, how how do you create passive income, ways to do it. He goes over many ways in the book. So definitely get that. I've already pre-ordered my copy. Can't wait to read it. Uh, but then like, just the the mindset of you know what is true wealth and that it's not about the number of, of dollars in the bank it's that you have time freedom you have freedom of choice you do have income coming in that's greater than the income going out and that is the true wealth and so we're all seeking that and we want to be able to spend more time with our families doing the things that we really love and passive income uh, needs to be a piece of this in fact you know I want to I want to get to the place where everything I do is all my whole lifestyle is funded from passive income and then that just frees up so much but you're gonna love this episode it's very fascinating but grab his book i can't wait to read it myself here's my interview with brian brian welcome to streams of income thank you good to be here so cool getting to meet you and uh my again my son's gonna be jealous of you going to egypt <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that was when i first fell in love with it was as a as a, a kid middle school really he watched the side note he was the reason he got into it was watching the the show um uh, night at the museum and they have a mummy in there and it just uh, yeah. wow what's all this and so now we have a whole ancient egypt play set that we play with from play nice. but it's fun but no that's not what we're here to talk about but i i enjoy hearing people's stories and so tell me your story how you got started in business entrepreneurship um and go back as far as you feel, feel like going <laughs> okay well let me think here because i i have to go back to uh uh high school when <laughs> when my dad told me you know son, you're going to have to start thinking about your future and what job you're going to do and that kind of stuff. And I said, I said, dad, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I do know that a job is not in my future. Yeah. <laughs> I said, that does not sound fun to me. I don't want to do a job. And, uh, you know, I didn't come from an entrepreneurial family, so that, that didn't go over really well. Um, and he told me, uh, you know, just go to college, get any degree, just graduate, just do yeah. it. And so I did, I kind of goofed off through school and and I just kind of knew from a very early age that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. And it took many years of trying things that didn't work before I found something that did. And yeah. then it finally stuck. And since that time, I've kind of been. Yeah, what was that first? Uh, what was one of the fun? What is one of the things that didn't work that you tried that you go back? Oh, it didn't work. Laugh about. Right, well, let's let's talk about that because everybody wants to know about the ones that did. Uh, the, one of the ones that didn't work was I've tried several network marketing uh, things when I was in high school and I never made any money doing that. And yeah. but the, the one that was really kind of funny and sad was I decided to get into um, landscaping because mm -hmm. I had met a guy that was making like six figures plus doing landscaping. I thought, Oh my gosh, you can make that much money. And at the time I thought that was like incredible. So yeah. I said, I said, all right, I'm just gonna do what he's doing. I'm going to do landscaping. So I went out and bought uh, all this expensive equipment on a trailer and all this stuff mm -hmm. and started mowing lawns. And uh, it was about three months in, I had a whole bunch of yards. I was doing it. I was working my butt off and it was very hard work. And I went outside one day to, take off in my car and my trailer and all the equipment was stolen. It was gone. Oh and it was just gosh. gone. 
And that was the end of that. And it wasn't insured. It was all I had. And oh, actually, no. it was the best thing that ever happened to me because otherwise I might have stayed with You'd that. Still path. be doing that. Yeah. And I was like, man, okay. So that was it. And it was very embarrassing. And I, I tried a few other things that didn't work. And um, yeah. yeah, until I finally found the right path. Yeah. What was that right path? What was the, what was the thing that, uh, like you found your thing? Well, I, well, you know, when I was in college, I, I, I didn't apply myself. I didn't particularly take it all that seriously, but I did have to do an internship on the last summer before I graduated. And it was uh -oh. for Hilton Resort, And I worked okay. at Hilton head because I was a tourism slash hospitality major. Okay. So I went there and I was, uh, I was so bored after I was working all day that I didn't have anything to do. I didn't know anybody there. And so I decided to start going to Barnes and Noble. And I went into the uh, the real estate and the stock section, the wealth section, mm -hmm. and I decided to just uh, create my own curriculum. And uh, I heard and I read that real estate was probably the number one easiest path and the most frequent path people became millionaires. So mm -hmm. I started obsessing over the real estate section. Yeah. And I started reading books, putting a bookmark in them, put them back on the shelf, another book. And I did that with 100 books. I love it. I, I literally filled up a notebooks with, with, uh, with my notes on real estate. And I finally determined real estate was going to be my path. I went home. I met a guy who was running these ads in the newspaper. Uh, he was selling book, uh, properties, no money down. I ended up buying five properties in the first few months and uh, uh, and lived off those properties and actually quit my job. And so it was the first wow. time I was ever a quote passivepreneur. I was totally free, had all the time in the world. I wasn't making a lot of money doing that, but I was enough that I was free financially, one hundred percent free. And that was in my twenties. And uh, and then I went on to become a millionaire in my twenties, which was my goal. Um, and that, that was amazing right up until the big real estate crash, <laughs> right? Oh that was God. the first vehicle for me was owning yeah. and was, uh, being an owner of real estate. Yeah. That's awesome, man. We could, there's so many places to dig in, but I, obviously I know that you reached out cause, um, you have a passion to helping people start, uh, businesses, passive businesses, but yeah. your title of your book's called don't start a side hustle. And most people are like, well, that's kind of how the path that you go, right? Typically you yeah. start something it's on the side and then you work up and then you, it becomes a business. Um, but tell yeah. me what that title means and, uh, just the, the, uh, in, you know, the, the yeah. concept behind that. Yeah. So the book uh, has been something I've been working on for two and a half years. Um, I didn't know what I was going to write on, but I knew that years ago that my favorite, my number one thing to talk about is just the concept of being free, you know, free, mm -hmm. financially free with your time, free of choice, being able to do what you want to do yeah. um, and not have somebody else dictate your life. And so that has always been a, a passion. So I, I started writing this book and I had a whole bunch of titles for it. I had, I think I called it fire the boss at one time. I called it mm -hmm. passivepreneur. I called it, uh, you know, all these different things. And, and, uh, and a friend of mine read that phrase that I put in the book, which is don't start a side hustle. And he's like, that should be the, the, the mm -hmm. uh, title of the book. And the reason I say that is, uh, I call it that is because in today's culture, especially among entrepreneurs, we are praised for our hustle and our grind. And it's kind of like, yes. you know, think of Gary V who says, yes. I work when you sleep and you got to hustle your face off. And yes. you know, you're all, you're all lazy if you're not, you know, working your butt off all the time. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with hard work. It's just that um, it's the wrong kind of money to be working towards. And mm -hmm. if, you know, I, my life was changed when I read rich dad, poor dad in my twenties. Yeah. And, you know, Kiyosaki talks about the idea that the, the, the rich buy assets, the poor and middle class do not, and they don't make their money from earned income. And so by definition, when you hustle, that means it's you, it's on you. It's all about you. It's your efforts. And there are ways to make passive income that, that don't require your efforts, at least don't require your efforts long-term. And yeah. so I would suggest that th this book is all about that, how to create passive income, do it from multiple sources, and then um, eventually get back your time and and also make a great living doing it. Yeah, for sure. Wow. But uh, the whole thing with passive income, we teach people how to, well, one of the things we do is teach people how to make money on Amazon. And yep. somebody asked me, like, how do you make money on Amazon passively? And it's, that's really hard because that's a very... You know, uh, you, you got to work people, at it. It's, people do it's, sell that though, right? People sell that that's a potential thing. I've never done yeah. it, but yeah. It's really, yeah, it's not, I mean, you could have a team in place. You could have a team of virtual assistants and then you could have mm -hmm. a shopper. You could have people that are doing prep and ship for you and make it fairly passive. Yeah. But um, I don't, it, that's just, uh, most people don't think that passive income really even exists. So uh, give me an example of some of the things that you're talking about that you teach um, yeah. that are potential businesses that people can get into. Well, fair, so I, I would love to. 
Yeah, I would love to. So there's 23, I have 23 different, currently 23 different sources of passive income. Wow. And I'll talk about, I'll talk about some of those, yeah. uh, although there are hundreds that exist. Okay. And I, I'm not suggesting that people need to get uh, 23 necessarily, but I do, su I do suggest that they get multiple, uh -huh. but there's three different ways to get passive income. There's three different categories of what I call passive preneurs. Uh, uh, the first one is owners. So I mentioned that I owned real estate back in the day and owning is the easiest, most fundamental, simplest way to do it. The challenge with owning is that you have to have money or credit in order to be able to do it. You have yeah. to either borrow money, which is debt, or you have to have money to put down down payment on a house or apartment building or buying a business or any of those kind of things. So for the most part, uh, owning is great, but it's the it's kind of the old model of creating passive income mm -hmm. because nowadays we live in a creator economy. We live in a sharing economy. So nowadays there are assets that you don't have to even own. You can control assets. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'll explain that in a minute. And you can also create assets from scratch, which I know you know all about. You can create in the digital world things that cost almost nothing to create, but they have the potential to make money over and over day in and day out. Yeah. So so by owning, creating and controlling assets, you can become a passive preneur. You can do one, you can do all three. Um, and uh, and that's kind of been my journey. So, so going from owner to, to control or just explain how that happened. Sure. Um, I, uh, I, I lost everything in the real estate crash had my credit was ruined. I had no money. I was completely broke. I had to start over, but I wanted to create passive income from real estate again. So I thought the easiest way was to control other people's properties to create cash flow. And I just simply rented properties. I put them on Airbnb and then I was able to triple the income and keep the difference. And That's I did this with the permission of the owners, right? Arbitraging. So well, we teach arbitrage, like going yeah, out, arbitrage. To, you go out to Walmart and buy a, buy a widget Same and you thing. spend on Amazon and make some money on it. Wow. Exactly. Arbitraging exactly. properties. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I was doing. I was arbitraging. I, I started this a few years ago and I, I, I got a, a virtual assistant to manage it all. So I'm not, I'm not cleaning properties because the cleaning company is doing that. I'm not managing the gas. I'm not doing any of that stuff. So it became truly passive. And wow. when I got to a certain point, I walked away from my job. I did have to get a job again after the whole crash. I walked away from my job, walked away from the other side hustles I was doing, mm -hmm. and I was able to live off those BNBs. And now that, that was me being a controller, right? And there's yeah. other ways to control. You can be an affiliate which means you control other people's products. You can be a drop shipper, which means you could be a white a person that white labels products that you didn't create. So yeah. you're just controlling other people's assets. You have permission to control them. So yeah. that's what a controller is all about. You're not creating anything, right? But mm -hmm. then you can also become a, become a creator. And the way that happened for me was people all wanted to know, how can I make money with Airbnb? And I thought, man, I got a, I got a product here. I got a course. Yes. So I created a course. Uh, this was many years ago. And I created a course, put it online. It took a lot of tweaking to get it to actually work. But when it worked, it went on to do millions and millions of dollars in sales. And it still sells to this day. And I update it periodically. I have new content going in there, but it's the same uh, uh, that I haven't put any more time into it, right? It's mm -hmm. the, the, in fact, the content's not even created by me. It's created by my students. Yeah. So, so, um, so that is a perfect example of a passive income vehicle that I created years yes. ago. And so you can go on and on describing all these different ways of making passive income. Um, and that's kind of what I teach in the book is that you need to focus mm -hmm. on that kind of money, not on earned money, not it, not on, um, you know, being an 80 hour a week entrepreneur. Because yeah. unless you can remove yourself from the business 100%, you're, you're an operator, you're not an owner of a business. Right. So, so that's kind of the idea behind the philosophy of what I teach. Yeah, that's the four quadrants, like uh, with Robert Kiyosaki's book. It's you've got the yes. employee, yes. and then down below you can have the that the uh, they're the the person that's in business for themselves, like the plumber. I take my self employed plumbing self -employed. skills. You go, yep, and then you yep. and you you have a business, but well, it's not a not really a business. You kind of bought yourself a job. Now you're then you you're have free an investor. From, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you'd be an yeah. investor. So, so yeah. it's very, it's it, in some ways it's similar. But one thing that Kiyosaki didn't talk about then because it didn't exist was there was no sharing economy then, when that book was published, and there was no creator economy, and that all that has emerged recently. So, give me an example. Say, what you mean by sharing economy? So, sharing economy would be, uh, for example, Airbnb. It's part yeah. of the sharing economy. Uber is part of the sharing economy. All those mm -hmm. kind of things. But in order to qualify for what I'm talking about, Uber is an example of what not to do. Uber mm -hmm. is the is a side hustle, and it's a yes. it, it is a perfect example of a side hustle. But the problem with Uber is the minute you stop driving, your butt's not in the seat. You're not earning any money, so it doesn't yeah. qualify as a passive income vehicle. So, mm -hmm. um, but but there are uh, lots of other ways to make money in the sharing economy. Uh, and there's also, um, let me give you another example, um, crowdfunding. 
you can invest a very small amount of money into a crowdfunding project where you make a return. You can invest uh, fractionally into mortgages, like you literally own a little piece of a mortgage. You can own fractionally into real estate. There's all kinds of cool ways where you literally just make, you write a check, you make money back. Yeah. Um, so there's all kinds of ways to do that that are that are available now in the sharing economy. Um, yeah. And then the creator economy has also just emerged in the last 10 years. And that's like anybody who's doing online courses, memberships, digital products, uh, Ebooks, uh, it goes on and on and on, right? Uh, uh, software, apps. I mean, apps have only been around since the iPhone, so 2007 or six. Um, yeah. So a- apps are a new concept. Um, and there's all kinds of ways that you can do this where you can create something once and it could pay you over yes. and over and over again. Yes. So some of those like crowdfunding, investing, you got to have some money to start with. Give me some examples or one example, maybe a student or just how, if you were, yeah. if you had to go all the way back again and I ha- I said, you know, you have 500 bucks, you're not going to use fundrise, like for example, no, for real. No, those, that's, that, not gonna that's an example of being an owner. Yes. Cause you would need capital. to invest. Yeah. So yes. wh- how would you use either the, cause you don't have capital, so you can't do the, can't do the owner economy. So, but the sharing and creation, what would mm. be one path for you right now knowing all everything that you know you only have 500 bucks where would you okay. where would you start um to do passive income and not go out and get an uber job or sell yeah, on yeah. ebay and all that yeah okay so i i'm biased but of course i'm known for for airbnb and, and short-term yeah. rentals so i'm going to say that is the fastest path i know of mm-hmm. uh and it takes very little if any money so i'll give you an example how i would do it if i had 500 dollars to my name um i would look for any properties in my area that are for rent I would make an appointment to go look at those properties. And when I met with the owner, I would say, let's say you're the owner. I'd say, Hey, Ryan, I love this property and I'd love to lease it, but I got an idea. Would you be interested in hearing how you could make way more than the $2,000 that you're asking for this property with no extra work on your part, no risk, no, just, just partnering with me on this deal. And you say, well, tell me me more. Or you say maybe, right? You say you, may get, you have doubts. I say, okay, great. Sure. What I want to do is I want to take your property. Let, let's say I'm talking to you and you got, you got a furnished property. Okay, that's because that's what I'm looking for. So you got a furnished property. And I say, well, I want to come in here on Monday and I want to take photos of this property and I'm going to list it on the home sharing sites. And any money that we make above and beyond that $2,000, all that money is going to go to you, that $2,000. Anything above and beyond that, we're going to split 50-50. Wow. So if that's okay with you, I'll be back here on Monday. I'll take photos and I'll list the property. Boom. Yeah. So I just did that. And uh, on on average, properties are going to make between two and four times whatever the rent is. So let's say it makes, um, you know, $3,500, $3,600. So I would take that $1,600. You'd make $800. I'd make $800. Wow. So $800 in passive income. Now here's where it gets passive. You are going to have guests checking in out of the property, but you can nowadays, you can have a VA or a virtual assistant service that can manage that property for you. And you might give them like 5% or 3% of that to manage it for you. So it truly becomes $800, $700 passively every month to come in. You could, of course, you could repeat that process. So it's a very fast way to do it. We help students do it. We show people how to do it. We have students that are doing it in a matter of, in fact, I just had a call with my students. One of them got one in four days. He got his first one. That's awesome. So, uh, and our average student is doing more like 1500 a month net. So, um, so there's, there's after, multiple ways. Um, after they're after already paying expenses. the uh, housekeepers and all that. Net, yeah. net, 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 net. So Absolutely. is the deal like with the, um, if I'm your owner, um, the, and so it's the profit, you would pay me half 50% of the profit after you're paying the housekeeper. After. Uh, yeah, because what I want to do, well, I want to guarantee you your rent. I don't want any risk on your part. So I say, I'm yeah. going to give you the $2,000 and yeah. then we'll do a split after that. So I don't make any money until you, you, you know, you make money and you you get, you get your rent. So there's that way. I could also just say, I'll just give you 2,200 instead of 2000. And, you know, but the the beauty of that is there's no lease. It's just a partnership deal. So it's like, anytime you want me to walk away, right. I'll walk away. Anytime we're not tying you in anything. Let's just try it for 30 days. You want to try it for 30 days. And you're like, okay, I guess so. Cause if it doesn't work, you know, I'll go with a tenant, but you're already burned out on tenants because tenants, you know, destroy properties and, you know, paint the room's weird colors and their dogs dig in the backyard. None of that stuff happens when you have a guest uh, that's staying there for two nights. That stuff doesn't happen with guests. Right. Tenants cause problems. Guests don't yes. generally cause problems. So so that's kind of the model that, but, but besides Airbnb, my other favorite one would be um, being a creator, creating digital products. So mm-hmm. digital courses is a great example. Yep. Um, creating uh, memberships where somebody pays, say $50 a month to be in your, your Facebook group or whatever, and you teach them something. Yes. Um, you know, you teach what you know. And if you don't know anything, because all I knew was Airbnb, so I started teaching that. But if you don't know anything, you, that's okay. You All you got to do is, is compile information. So you could be a researcher. And yeah. You could say, I don't know anything about podcasts, but I'm certainly going to go interview 
15 top podcasters or whoever mm -hmm. I get my hands on, I'm going to put all those interviews into a product and I'm going to sell it and I'm going to sell it for $500 or a thousand dollars. So yes. it's going to take a lot of effort to put it together. But once that's done, I can start selling it and it'll start selling, you know, uh, every day without me, I can have a webinar or a video that teaches or that sells it for me. Yeah, so, so, um, so that's another example. You could become an expert in an area. You could just say, I'm just yeah. going to become an expert in this yeah. area. I don't yeah. know anything about yeah. it. So there's no excuse for somebody that doesn't ha isn't an expert. Cause I wasn't an expert when I started, I just was yeah. like, uh, I'll just teach what I know. So, yeah. so I think creator economy, uh, creating digital products is amazing. That would also would take very little money to start a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You just need a couple pieces of software and you're up and running. Yeah. What do you think? Which of those are the fastest way to start making some money in your opinion? Well, I mean, they can all be pretty quick, but I just, I love the elegance of the B and B model because yeah. anybody can do it. I mean, it's like, if you've ever rented properties before, I mean, it's not that comp. It's just that, right. Whereas yeah. uh, doing software and doing online stuff and learning those kind of things, there's more skill sets involved, although it can be passive. So for example, I, uh, Years ago, I wanted a calculator slash software that would tell me what I would make on a property, but mm -hmm. I couldn't find any that existed because with short-term rental, there's so many variables. You got day rate, you got weekend rate, you got cleaning fees, you got the rent and utilities that you pay, all these things, right? So I could never figure out what I was going to make. And mm -hmm. if you changed one variable, it would throw everything off. So yeah. I went to a developer and I said, can you make me this thing and make it like really gorgeous with this cool interface and super easy to use and dials that you can twist and it will just yeah. spit out a number. It'll just tell you, this is what you're going to make in a month on a property. Yeah. And they said, yeah, I can do that. So I hired these guys. I think it was in India or Pakistan. Yeah. I maybe spent like two grand to build it because it was a little bit complex. And uh, when it was done, it actually worked. That's and I awesome. put it online. I sold it for $47. And to this day, it sold like eight hundred thousand dollars in sales and it still sells all, all the time without any input that's incredible it. that it was only two grand and good most people who i've heard that have had some friends that have done software it's always it costs four times as much as yeah. what they say and four of times course. as long yeah well this is pretty simple i mean it wasn't a complicated software but yeah uh, but it's an example where i created it one time i've literally put no time into it for years it's still a product that we sell all the time uh it's called the deal analyzer and uh Mm. You know, and I don't know anything about that stuff. I don't know. All I knew is like, I know what I want it to look like. I know what I want it to do. And it, once I used it, I was like, well, let's tweak this and tweak that. But once it worked the way I wanted it to work, other people wanted that product too. Cause they were like, oh, well, that's a solution that I need. Yeah. So yeah. that's an example. Um, I wrote an ebook years ago. Uh, it still sells every single day. It's an ebook about how to make money on Airbnb. I've sold over a million dollars of that ebook. It still sells every day, dozens of copies, hundreds of copies, depending on the day. Um, so that's hands off. Um, you know, these kind of things don't take a lot of money. You just have to kind of get a skill set a little bit to yeah. learn how to, how to create them. But most people are not doing that. Most people are starting a business and then they're running that business and they're trying to grow that business and they're the CEO or the manager of that business. And they're just constantly doing that all the time. They're working in their business and not on it, right? They're working in it. And there's nothing wrong with that if you really enjoy what you do. Yeah. But most entrepreneurs are doing it because they want to they want they think it's a better path than having a job and they also believe that it's going to eventually set them free but yeah. the average yeah. entrepreneur in america works considerably more than 40 hours a week and the average entrepreneur in america right now makes 72,000 a year so they're not getting rich they might be making slightly more than w2 earner but they're not getting rich on average yeah. so yeah. if your goal is to get wealthy and to make a lot of money and to have a lot of free time you got to find the right vehicle yes. uh, and i i would argue that running your own company might not be the best vehicle you could have a company you can own it but you want to have someone else run it and someone else manage it yeah and focus on building assets that can pay you over and over yeah and over again. give me an example of what your day looks like with all everything uh, there's so many places we could dive into but, uh, oh yeah there's um, so many ways we can go but like, I'm curious to know, like with your Airbnb course business that you have, like yeah. um, how much time does that take a week? I mean, for you, it might just be looking at the stats at this point and seeing how much yeah. you've sold, but like, give me an idea of what, how, how passive are your yeah. passive in, because it's not like you're, you're totally forgetting about them. Cause you probably, you probably talk to the VA once in a while that runs certain things. Um, right. Or like, give yeah. me an example of how, how passive this all, all this is. Well, I would say of those 23, I would say 21 of them are completely passive, like as in like a few hours a year or a few that's hours, awesome. a couple hours a month. So completely wow. passive. A couple of them are not. So let me give you an example of the one that's not. Writing a book. Writing a book. <laughs> writing a book is a lot of work. Let me tell you, don't do it yeah. unless you're really sure you want to do it. But here's the yeah. thing. This book is now done. Finally, took a lot of effort. I wrote it. Um, and and the thing about this book is every time it sells, it'll sell forever into the future where it yes. just became a number one bestseller a few days ago. Um, this book will make me a small royalty. It's not a lot, mm -hmm. but 
inside this book, there's a QR code. Yep. And if you scan this QR code, it's going to take you to a website. No, I can't give it to you yet unless you get the book. And on that website is all my lists, all the ways that I make passive income, all the potential ways I've heard of them making passive income and stuff like that. And when you go there, if you buy any of those products or buy any of those services, guess who makes money? I do. And there's actually 10 different ways I make money in this book. And I'm, I'm not shy about it. I say, look, watch what I do and learn for yourself. This is called embedded offers. So there's all these offers in the book, ways to make money that helps my reader but also benefits me. So this is a passive income vehicle that I create one time that pays me many, many different ways. Yes. Yes, it took effort. Yes, it took a lot of work to create it, but now it's done. So this will exist forever. Uh, You know, uh, Lord willing, it'll be a bestseller on on many other lists besides just Amazon. And it will be a vehicle that will pay me over and over again. So that's an example where once I create it, I kind of put it on Mm -hmm. autopilot, maybe once in a blue moon, I might go in and update something or whatever. But it's it's a vehicle to make passive income, one that's not even listed on my list of 23. Mm. Um, so being an author is a great way. In fact, a lot of the big people that you know, uh, if you follow anything, any of the marketers, any of the big, huge people, they all have books. I mean, Tony Robbins, there's a reason they write books. Books introduce them to a bigger audience that allows them to, to make income from that. Yes. So um, so that's a perfect example of one that has taken my time, although this, this is uh, out next month. And at that point, I will spend very little time on the book. It'll be done. That project will be done. Is uh, the best my, place to get that at Amazon? Uh, the, no, no, I would recommend going to uh, watchfreetraining.com. So Watch watchfreetraining.com. The reason I would send you there, anybody who's watching this, is because the book is for sale for the same price that it is on Amazon. Don't get it on Amazon because if you go to my website, I give you almost $400 in bonuses for getting nice. one $26 copy. It's the same price. $26 hardcover copy, not the soft cover. And then you get all these bonuses. Uh, and there's a training on there and you can learn more about this and stuff. It's really cool. So go to watchfreetraining.com to get that. Okay, awesome. So, so, so what I do is once I get a vehicle set up, I call these passive income vehicles. Once I get a new vehicle set up, I try to spin it off and make it automated. And then I look mm. at another one or I just take a break. I go to Egypt or whatever, take yeah. some time off. Um, so, uh, so the general rule is I won't get involved in something unless it's has the potential to be truly passive. Um, Mm -hmm. let me give you one more example. Um, I invest in my students projects. So a student might say, I got a deal in Atlanta, four bedroom, four bath house. I need money. You know, I want to, I want you to invest into this. So I cut a check. Uh, for whatever the cost is to furnish that deal and maybe do the deposit and the rent because we're doing lease deals. And then I get the money back immediately. The first few months I get I get paid back and then I get a cut of all future profits on that deal. So how uh-huh. much time did it take me to write a check and maybe yeah. do a little bit of due diligence yeah. uh, You know, with a partner that I trust? I mean, it's that, not a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So then that becomes passive. I can literally, uh, the, the returns are incredible. So I yeah. just invest one time, boom, I get that money as for as long yeah. as they have that property. I can do that over and over again. So that's another example of a passive source. Yeah. Wow. Is being, always, a, being, a, being a silent partner, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a is there a certain amount of time that you would consider something passive versus active? Um, like you said, a couple hours a year, you have to check. I'm just curious. Like, I mean, that's a really what, good question. That's a like really for good me, question. it like might be like I would co- might consider something passive that only takes two hours a month. But for you, it might be yeah. no. That's yeah. Still pretty it's not that you me. never ever ever spend time on it. I mean, even yeah. somebody who invest in the stock market, right? Yeah, you're if you invest a, in the stock market, you put all your money into dividend stocks, okay? You're making yeah. passive income. Yeah. You might still look at your portfolio constantly, sure. right? Because you want to sure. know what it's doing. Right. But the idea is that I write about this in the book. So you want to find a vehicle that has exponential growth possibility on the income side. So an ex- a job is not a good example because you can't you can't make 10 times more tomorrow than you do today with a job. Right. Even if you're a surgeon, you can't say, I'm going to make 10 times more tomorrow. It's not exponential. So mm-hmm. you want to find an exponential vehicle that can go up exponentially in income. And the easy way to know whether or not it's going to do that is just ask yourself, are other people making the mon- kind of amount of money that I want to make? If, if you're yeah. trying to make millions of dollars, you better make sure the vehicle you're in, people are making millions of dollars. If not, mm-hmm. find a new vehicle. So look for something that has exponential income pos- potential, but mm-hmm. also has the ability to scale down in time involvement. Yes. So the idea is their money's going to go up, your time involvement's going to go down. So your money per hour invested yeah. goes to the moon. It goes, it's ridiculous. So yeah. like, as I, in, in, when I built my course, it took a lot of effort to build the course, but that was yeah. five, six years ago. Mm-hmm. So the amount of, you know, the amount of money I've made per hour, I don't even know, it'd be tens of thousands of dollars per hour invested because yeah. that course has done 16 million in sales, just that one course. Wow. So, so that's an example where, you know, long-term is a really good investment of my time. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so that's kind of the way I would say it. And it's not so much about how much time, um, but I try to look for things that, you know, 
very, very minimal. They might need a little bit of maintenance or I check in once in a while to make sure things are okay, but generally take very, very little, yeah. if any of my time. So it's have more you found just like, anything oh, else I better, that, um, I better check in. What's that? Have you found anything else that rivals the V and B model that you mentioned with that? Uh, um, like, let's say somebody that I just hate real estate. There's no way I'd ever go down that oh, road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, totally. Anything totally. that you feel like has the, maybe not the same potential, but there was, is it maybe the same type of model where you're just leveraging somebody else's assets? I would say I love affiliate marketing. Affiliate yeah. marketing is great. So for those who don't know what that is, affiliate marketing ju just means you have someone's permission to sell their products and courses uh, mm -hmm. for them. And then, uh, so as an example, if I email my 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 everybody on my email list and say, look, I got this course on on flipping properties or whatever. It's really amazing. It's from a friend of mine or how to, how to do an, how to do an award-winning podcast, whatever mm -hmm. go buy, go check out his course. So they go buy the course. It's thousand dollars. I get 500. He yep. gets 500. And I did nothing other than just, I sent some emails exactly. right now. Somebody might say, well, wait, I don't have any email list. Well, nobody has an email list. Nobody's born. I wasn't born with an email list. So you have to start somewhere, right. but you can have an email list of a hundred people. You could email a hundred people. You could have a 4% conversion rate. So you just made 4,000 in sales. You made $2,000 from sending one email. Yeah, so, yeah. and that email list would grow over time. So you get, there's, there's ways to build an email list. So uh, you can also do, you can sell affiliate products other ways, but affiliate marketing is great because you're not yes. creating yeah. products. You can go get proven products and services that are, that win, that people mm -hmm. want and mm -hmm. just sell them to a new audience and offer what them to a new audience. So it's very fast. It's a very quick way to make money. Um, and it yeah. is, it can be fully automated. So I love affiliate marketing. Yeah. It's a great way. Yeah. But your BNB model, I think beats that because if I don't have an email list, like the Airbnb already has the eyeballs there. VRBO already has the yes. eyeballs. Yes. I don't have to build a list there. I hate to keep coming back to it, but, you know, cause it's kind of like, you know, don't, don't ask a, a dentist if you need teeth work. Cause he's going to say yes. Uh, but you know, I, it's changed my life. Yeah. I, I was able to walk away from the last job that I'll ever have because of Airbnb. It set yeah. me on the path. It got me making the, my first few hundred thousand a year uh, passively. And then it, it, and then it led to so many other things, but just for somebody yeah. who's just like, I just need to do something. I need to do it now that yeah. I would recommend. I think that's the best model. And if they want, if anybody wants to learn how to do that, you can just go to free BNB call.com free BNB call. So I have the free training and then free BNB call is where you could talk to my team. Cause what we do is we actually, uh, we work with you. We coach you live. We literally nice. coach you to to go to get going quickly. So yeah. that's a great model as well. But there's so many different ways. I mean, I've heard of people doing things that I've never even thought of. Like, you know, there's there's you know, you know about cri there's crypto staking, crypto farming. There's ways to make yep. passive money, crypto. Um, yeah. There there's uh, let me give you some other examples. I got so many examples. There's um, <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, debt and lean investing. I mentioned that angel investing, membership programs. Uh, mm -hmm. You could sell research and data. I know people that sell spreadsheets. It's just basic wow. Google spreadsheets that they sell for three, four hundred, five hundred dollars. But they're, what they do is really complex. It's like if you want to wow. know how to calculate the profitability on every product and service in your company, uh -huh. and you're going to pay somebody five hundred dollars for that spreadsheet, it's worth it. And you get it, yeah. and you're like, oh, this is just a Google sheet. Wow, how much is this guy making on this thing? So you yeah. know, it's another example. There's you can create these That's things, so and cool. it's it's not so much what it costs you to make. It's what the value is. If it's a high Absolutely. value to your consumer, you can charge yes. whatever, whatever they, you know, I mean, what, what do you think software is when you, when you get these apps and you buy these apps? I mean, they're, they, they don't cost them anything to sell a bunch of them. I mean, right. Software. So, yeah. um, so, you know, it, it exists pretty much everywhere in the, in the business world. That's so cool. I, I saw something that on your site. I don't know if it's on your page or maybe on the Amazon page where, um, or your LinkedIn, um, yeah. time plus money plus choice equals true wealth. So talk yeah. about that because it like somebody listening might be like, you know what? I don't, I mean, I'd love to be a millionaire, but I don't really see myself there, but I don't really need to have a million dollars to be truly free. Right. It doesn't, it's not about yep. the, the <laughs> amount of money necessarily. Cause you could still only be making five grand a month. And true. if you have no bills, you're financially free. As long as you can you you know, are. Still do what you want. No, I totally agree. So I have, this is in the book here, income plus time plus choice. So I argue that uh, in the book that wealth is not about uh, a monetary amount or a net worth or a, a certain amount of cash flow. Although there's very, I'm, and I'm not saying that like you shouldn't have those things. I'm just saying it's got to be more than that. Because if you have yeah. a lot of income, I know a lot of guys that make a lot of money, but they have zero time. Like they don't, they don't play. They don't have fun. They don't spend yeah. time with their families because they, they're just making money. That's all they're doing. Yeah. So wealth has to be also discretionary time. Discretionary time means time that you get to choose to do what you want. You literally can choose to do whatever you want, not just work. Uh, so that's discretionary time. And then free choice means that you're not 
under someone else that dictates what you do because you can make right. a lot of money yes. working for someone else where it's like they they own own you right you have the golden right. handcuffs yes. so it's those three things combined and yeah. Uh, and yeah I, I somebody asked me the other day what's what's the right amount of money to be quote wealthy and I said <laughs> well it's not so much about wealth or net worth the number one goal for everybody should be becoming financially free not rich first not wealthy but financially free which mm -hmm. means you are as kiyosaki said out of the rat race you have enough money coming in passively that you never need to work again and yeah. that is a way more exciting day than when you make yeah. your first million dollars or your 10 10 mm -hmm. million dollars i mean that's way more exciting when you can be like i am my own man i am my own woman nobody yeah. can tell me what to do at this point i am on my own and this is amazing and yes. you can just do whatever you want so to me, that's financially free. It depends on the person. That might be two thousand dollars a month. It might be five thousand. It might be a hundred thousand dollars a month. But yeah. um, but the goal is to get to the point where you're free first, and then you start building wealth and building mm -hmm. the next phase. Yeah. So what? So I I, I kind of alluded to this earlier. When I'm curious, what is your week or what is a, a typical oh, day? Oh yeah, yeah. For you and so maybe number of hours that you work in a day or versus in a week and the things that you work, you're working on now because you don't sounds like you don't really have to work. Like you're able no, to no. like jump in and look at your staff, maybe communicate with your VA. You have meetings, I'm sure. And you're on Zoom calls like this. Promote. And I know writing your book was probably very intense, but like what's um, a day without without that, with like when you have, you know. So without, yeah, I mean, the, the book was an enormous project. And I, but, you know, the book was a choice because it wasn't just that I needed, I needed to make more income. It was more. Right. Yeah. One of my goals was to always to be a best-selling author. It was a goal yeah, I had yeah. for years. So for me, my dream was to go, uh, I'm looking at the Charleston Harbor right here. So wow. my goal was to go out boating and go right on a boat. And so I would do that like several days a week. I'd go take a boat out, I'd anchor in the harbor, and I would just write on my laptop. And it was just an inspiring place to be. And I wrote about yeah. life and about philosophy and all these things. My uh, It starts with a story of my father. And and so uh, that to me was like, I'm already winning, right? I'm already just yes. doing what I want to do. Yes. Uh, it just so happens to be something that would also pay me. So um, so when I'm not doing that, um, yeah, I mean, it just, it, it depends. You know, I, I can kind of have choice to travel. I like to travel a lot. I've, I've been in dozens of countries. I'm going to Egypt here in a, in a few months again. I, um, I got to go to Montana a few months ago with some buddies and go uh, with Jeeps all over Montana and Idaho mm -hmm. and uh, do stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, I love playing. I like having a lot of fun. I mean, it just depends on the, mm -hmm. but, but I, you know, none, none of them require much of my time at all. Yeah. So it's more like, what do I want to do today? What do I want to spend my time on? What's, what's the new project for me? And then I might just take time where I don't do hardly anything. You know, my, uh, sure. I'm married to, to a Brazilian. So we go to Brazil, uh, I spend quite a bit of time. We're going to be going okay. down there for a month and a half. So I just live in Brazil for a little while and, and uh, enjoy so that cool. culture and stuff. So, you know, there are times where I don't do much at all, you know, it just depends yeah. if it's between, between projects and stuff. Yeah. So, it, you know, so it's kind of, it, it varies, but it's, it's not so imp much important. Like what I do, it's more important. Like what do people listening to this? What do you want to do? Like, do yeah. you wake up in the morning and, and, and wish you were doing something else? And if so, that there's a path for that. You just gotta yeah, stop, you know, life is too short to be doing things you hate yeah. and especially doing them for the money. Um, and, and I talk about in the book, how you shouldn't just quit your job. I mean, there's a path here to be able to jump from a job to having passive income. Yes. I don't recommend everybody just start, stop their job. But if your goal is to jettison the job, eventually, uh, I can show you the path. Yeah. My, I have a friend that I don't know if you've heard a guy named Dan Miller who wrote the book, 48 days to the work in life you love. Mm -hmm. Um, he's in, yes. I mean, now in Florida from Tennessee, but he mentions, and just curious what you, th what you think about this? Um, uh, it's kind of a personal decision, but he recommends if you're starting a business, uh, that this maybe the safer way to quit your job would be when your income from your business is at 50% of your, your day job, because oh, yeah, then yeah. you know that if I quit this job, then I can easily make up that extra 50% because now I've bought back 40 or 50 hours a week. And, I, talk about and that. I know, again, yeah. it's probably totally personal. Somebody needs to pray about it and talk to their spouse about it. But do you have like a typical guideline of like when it's safe to make the leap? Yeah, I actually talk about that in the book as well. And mine's 150%. So oh, I actually wow. talk about, yeah. yeah. So four steps to becoming a passivepreneur. Okay. Um, and so I talk about how... <clears throat> If you're making 50,000 a year, I recommend you get 75,000 a year coming in passively before you leave the job. So it's like so obvious that holy yes. crap, it's costing me money to stay here. I got <laughs> right. to make the leap. Not, yes. not eh, it might work. So I'm going to take a risk. Sure. No, sure. no, no. So for example, 
um, this gentleman that uh, came into the program, our coaching program, he came in right during the pandemic. Okay. So like June of the pandemic, it was nuts. The, the whole travel industry shut down, but he decided to do it anyways. He got in, he got three deals immediately from owners, three properties in the first 30 days. Wow. And he was making six figures already at his job. And he had a tax business on the side. Man. So he was able in nine months to quit his six figure job with all of his benefits and get rid of his tax business on the side and just live off of his B and B's that he ended up automating. So, so he was, he was doing multiple six figures, which all my coaches are. I got some that are doing seven figures a year, which isn't sounds insane, but they're doing over a million dollars <laughs> awesome. a year in Air, Airbnb. And they were able to far exceed what they made at their job. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the idea is just, just do one vehicle, get it to where it's super, super, super profitable enough to make you leap from that job. If that's what you want to do and then start getting your second vehicle. Cause it's not enough to have one. You want to have multiple yeah. it helps you yeah. sleep at night. And if you do 10 or five or seven, there's a good chance that one of them is going to be runaway success because yes. not all of them are equal. Some are going to be a nice little drip of income. Some are going to be right. a little stream of income. Some are going to be a torrent of river of income, depending on what you choose. Yeah. So the idea is just do one, just do one, one, one. If you've never had passive income, you don't want to go try three. You don't right. want to be in a network marketing company and be trying to be an online marketer and try to be a real estate professional, real you know, investor, B and B or don't do all that. Just do one, yeah. pick it, do it. And when you get to a certain point, then you give yourself permission to do the next one. That's so, good. so my goal was to get to a certain point on each one of those. And when I hit that yeah. goal, then I could look at other things. Yeah. Um, a couple of cool, last couple of questions. I was thinking about like, um, obviously you're in Charleston, South Carolina, a lot of yeah. visitors there. So it seems like the B&B &B model would work well there. Let's say, and I'm in yeah. Dallas, it's going to work well here yeah. too. But let's say I'm yes. in rural Indiana. I'm, I'm from Indiana originally. And okay. so it's not the bastion of like, hey, everybody's going to go to Indiana for the summer. Yeah. How does it work for somebody who lives out in farm country? Um, how do they do that B and D model? That's a great question. So I get this all the time. Um, one of the things is, first of all, you don't have to do this in your backyard, but I do recommend people start within an hour radius of where they live yeah. and almost anywhere in the U S within an hour radius, unless maybe you're in Idaho or North Dakota or somewhere like really in the middle of nowhere, you're going to be near metro areas. Now it might not be a huge metro area. It might be a hundred thousand, 200, 300,000 people. Mm -hmm. You're going to yeah. be near metro areas. So you do have that option to go to places that are within an hour radius. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a lot of students that are, that are in truly rural areas. We're talking like uh, towns with 6,000, 8,000 people. Uh -huh. I, I've interviewed some of these people. I'm like, how in the world are you doing this with five properties in a town of 6,000 people? And the guy was like, well, Brian, there's no hotels here. So like, there's nowhere to stay. So people are coming in for family reunions or because of a wedding or wow. to see family or because they might want to move here or move away from here, whatever. And they don't have a place to stay. So they stay at my B&Bs and the rents are really cheap because I live in the middle of nowhere. So it's always easy to make them profitable. And I'm like, oh, That's so cool. So then we started doing the research and then we came up with a very simple answer for that, which is if you have a hotel near you, that means people by definition are staying there short term. Nobody lives in a hotel. Like unless, I mean, there are some places, I guess, but <laughs> not the kind of places you want to be, but most people don't live in hotels. They go there and stay short term or right. a week, week or two. And those hotels usually cost millions of dollars to build. So somebody, even on the side of a highway, you're driving down a highway and there's a La Quinta on the side. You're like, somebody built that. It's a three, it's a $5 million building. Yeah. Who stays there? I don't know. Somebody who's on the highway and needs a place to stay. Yeah. So there's yeah. always people that need places to stay. And yeah. some people don't want to stay in hotels or they need three bedrooms or mm -hmm. whatever. They need a yard. They need to be able to bring their pet. They need So they're looking for short term, not yeah. hotels. So that's the answer is that there's always people that need short term. And it's not necessarily yeah. tourists. Most people that travel are not tourists. So yeah. uh, you don't have to be in a tourist city like where I live. Yeah, you can make it fun too. Because if you love to travel, you just go to a new town with your wife and you, make, you write the whole thing off because you're going to go there to talk to yeah. owners to expand your B and B business. So yeah, or you, or you have travel is tax deductible. Totally. totally. Or you have properties and places that you like to travel to, you know, as students who I know like to go to Hawaii. So they try to get a deal when they're in Hawaii and they have a place mm. to stay when they go there. So there's all kinds of cool ways to do it. But, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's the answer. Is it, it you know, there's a need just about anywhere for short term. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, last question. And, and then if there's anything else on your heart, feel free to share. And I also sure, sure. To, what I love I went to your site and saw that you're helping Operation Underground Railroad. That's yes. really cool, by the way. Yes. To be you're I mean, that's so awesome to be able to be at a level where now it's like, you know, I imagine that you and your wife and your kids, you're 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 good. You know, it's not like you have to work anymore, but now you're thinking. How can I make an impact in the world yeah. beyond just my family and my students? Because by the way, I mean, having a course that you're helping people become financially free, that's an awesome impact too. 
Yeah. But then even thinking beyond that, then, and, uh, you know, helping folks that are, uh, yeah, we give a portion of every sale to, uh, operation cool. underground railroad, which, which helps, uh, kids who are trafficked and get them out yeah. of, uh, sex trafficking and, uh, mm. forced labor and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So I actually had an interview not too long ago. It was like a month ago or so with, uh, with the guy who started that organization. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. Tim, ba- Tim Ballard is his name. And yeah, I've heard uh, his name. Yes. Yeah, He's the one who started the organization and ex military guy. And yeah. uh, so it's amazing. It's, it, it's a great organization. It's the only one that we support financially yeah. as a company. Well, yeah. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, but I want to ask you just any, any of the last pieces of advice you have for listeners. And if there's anything else you sh- want to share that we didn't cover. Um, no, I would just say, you know, everything that I learned, almost everything I learned has been from books. I have had mentors, but I would say the vast majority of what I've learned has been from this library right here. Um, And uh, uh, you know, books is the best investment dollar for dollar that you can make in yourself. Uh, you know, for twenty dollars, thirty dollars, a book can change your life. So uh, for you it's free because you just did it at Barnes and Noble. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. I did at Barnes and Noble. So yeah, don't do that with my book. Just buy it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, I just didn't realize what I did there. Um, so no, I, I think that books are really important. And if you're at all a reader or, you know, you like audible or whatever, this book, I don't know any book that exists like this. Um, it's been inspired by some other books that changed my life, but there's nothing like this. Yeah. And so it's everything I know and other people like me who are passive preneurs, everything we know is in this book. And, um, I hope it'll change some lives. And, uh, like I said, if you want to get all the bonuses I've got, I mean, you can get an instant audible audio download of the first few chapters mm-hmm. of the book. You can't get it on Amazon because the book's not out yet. Right, right. Get it on my website just for buying the book through the website. That's watchfreetraining.com. So watchfreetraining.com. I'll get you a, a, a free workshop. Uh, you get access to the fa- the Facebook group where you can meet a whole bunch of other passivepreneurs. Again, these things don't cost anything. You just buy yeah. a one twenty six dollars book and you'll get all that stuff. Yeah. So go there and get a copy and tell your friends about it. And uh, hopefully I'll hear stories from some of these people watching this. They're like, yes. hey, I bought that book and I... I did something about it and it, it worked. I love it. I guarantee there's a lot of my audience is going to love this stuff because there's, I mean, they're always looking for ways to make Perfect money fit for your audience. passively. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for, thank you so much for reaching out to me and uh, allowing yeah. me to interview you too. This has been fun. Well, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. All right. It. And anytime you got something else coming out or a course or a new book, you okay, find me and we'll have you on. I will. All right. Thanks, thanks Brian. You've been listening to Streams of Income with self-help author, Ryan Rieger. From right here in the Dallas Metroplex, Ryan teaches several entrepreneurial courses and group coaching programs to students all over the world. Be sure to listen next week at the same time for Streams of Income with Ryan Rieger.